You've heard of the battle of the sexes. It may seem to you like the competition between men and women has escalated over the past few decades, but conflict between men and women is nothing new. Just think about it. It's at the heart of many of Shakespeare's plays. And before that, ancient writers imagined warring gods and goddesses whose antagonism affected humans. But to get at the heart of this conflict, you have to go back much further, back to one man and one woman in a garden. The battle between the sexes didn't start with the women's movement. It goes all the way back to Genesis 3 and the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve's sin destroyed their once blissful relationship. The entire human race was damaged, and men and women have struggled in their relationships ever since. Here's Nancy Lee DeMoss and Mary Cassian, along with Aaron Davis, Carolyn McCulley, and Dana Gresh. Now when I say Battle of the Sexes, what comes to your mind? Mm, I think of that song, uh, anything, you can do i can do better i can do anything better than you see i can yes i can you know that song they're duking it out over who's the best (laughs) i know men versus women men versus women let's duke it out that's right yeah i actually uh have a board game that that i picked up in a bookstore Uh not all that long ago called the battle of the sexes we have that too do you have Mm -hmm. it you know let's try little caricature cartoons on it yeah Yeah, crazy game men can ask women questions women can ask men questions like Yeah. yeah my husband lost when he got the question what is exfoliate (laughs) <laughs> he doesn't exfoliate. He, didn't he doesn't exfoliate. <laughs> he doesn't exfoliate. Battle so, of, Battle of Sexes, it's a board game. Battle of the Sexes. And we've talked often about how every single commercial um, shows a man who deserves to be mocked, just the way that yeah. these mm-hmm. cast. So it's being played out. I feel like it's being piped into our living rooms in every reality show. It's this guy versus girl, mm-hmm. or a bunch of girls versus one guy, or... Or she shows him up. That's right. You know, he'll do something, and she'll just go in there and show that girls can do it better. That's right. You know? and, and it's a real, you know, it's a, it's, it's a sad thing because it's actually showing up in the way boys and girls are growing up. One of the research pieces of research that I came across recently was the great difference in the number of boys that are in college versus Mm. the number of boys that exist. It's astonishing. So the population is predominantly Mm -hmm. male. It's not a huge difference, but statistically there are more males in North America, but there are more females entering college right now Mm -hmm. because for years we've been telling boys that they're dumb. They're the reason for all of our problems. And you can actually trace that back to about the eighties and seventies when they really started to sink into that almost self-fulfilling prophecy of the mm-hmm. feminist movement that everything good is created by women and every problem is created by man. And you can see that in the educational systems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even down to just the disparaging remarks we'll make like, oh, boy's eyes, you know, what, you couldn't find the socks that are right there on the floor, you yeah. know? And uh, it's just that, that sense of like, well, we do things better. And we can casually, all of us can casually make these jokes and not think about the implications of them. Mm-hmm. So what are some other ways that we see that battle of the sexes playing out in women's lives today in their relationships? You know, we know a lot of women, we're ministering to a lot of women, our lives, others. How do we see that playing out? You well, just gave one, Carolyn. What are yeah, some others? I mean, there's such a, a tug of war for control, really. I, I think that, that there's just, there's always a... Uh, a you know, this, this pulling that goes on for, you know, who's going to control and, and that, that often happens in relationships on a small level. Yeah. But I think also in terms of, of um, on a larger cultural level, I mean, we see this, this pull that, that there can't be any disparity between the way men and women are treated because otherwise it's not fair. So we see even in sports programs, um, you know, they're, they're putting down a lot of the men's sports programs mm-hmm. now because there needs to be an equal number of women or they're taking women into courses, um, you know, when there are guys who are more qualified, but because mm-hmm. we need to treat the sexes equally because there's this battle and it needs, everything needs to be equalized that, that, uh, you know, more women will be accepted in. And I know that, that that's been a frustration uh, for a lot of the men that I know, that there's just this right. this 
I feel like it's not even just that, that they have to be treated equally, but women have to be treated better. Better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the women are winning the battle of the sexes, but mm -hmm. as we've been looking in the study, we're really losing. What's really interesting to me is I think that, you know, given we've looked at the story of what men and women were created to be, and it's interesting to me that I think that Satan played to the to the weaknesses mm -hmm. of male and female, to their not not weaknesses in a in a bad sense, but I think that every vulnerabilities strength, vulnerabilities the, yeah. is mm -hmm. a better word yeah. vulnerabilities because I think with every strength comes a vulnerability, mm -hmm. and I think I think you know for the vulnerability for men is is passivity, mm -hmm. um, and the vulnerability for women is is just. Um, you know, stepping outside of that which God would have for us and, and just directing our own lives and, and responding really to the wrong thing. And I think Eve's, Eve was such a responsive relational creature that, you know, the serpent, when he approached her, you know, engaged her in relationship and she mm -hmm. responded to Satan instead of responding to God. And, mm -hmm. and so she responded out of, she, you know, what she did, she did out of who she was as a woman. She was a mm -hmm. responder, a relater. Yeah, let's you connect, make relationships. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Satan probably knew inherently some of their weaknesses. He had observed them. Mm -hmm. And it says in the book of Ephesians that men are called to love and women are called to submit and respect. And I've heard a pastor say, and this really resonates with my heart, that one of the reasons God issues those commands is because one of the things that's most difficult for a woman is to submit and respect. You go see an office full of men or a, an army of soldiers of men, and they have no trouble with the hierarchy of authority. But you put the same woman in that same setting, women in that same setting, and you have some play for power, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was a nice way of saying what could happen in that room of women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what happens in many office environments right, when it's sure. all women. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think Satan had observed her, perhaps, and realized that I, I know where I can mess with this hierarchy of authority mm -hmm. and submission. It wasn't just Adam she wasn't submitting to. It mm -hmm. was God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's so interesting about that is, is I think sin targets us sex specifically, mm -hmm. but sin... Also, when God gave judgment against sin, it was sex specific. He just didn't come in and give this blanket judgment. Yeah. It's to Adam he said this, mm -hmm. to Eve he said this, and there's some differences in the way that we're impacted by the presence of sin. Yeah. And let's talk about what those judgments were because it helps us understand, I think, our calling as women mm -hmm. and, and our fallenness as women. Uh, Genesis chapter three is where you have the sin, the temptation and the sin, and uh, Satan did tempt them, sex specifically. But then you get to verse uh, 19, 16. And uh, Mary, why don't you read that passage, verses 16 to 19, um, and see how this plays out, the difference of the judgments on the man sure, and the woman. Sure, To the woman he said, I will surely, mul and that's, that's the Lord talking, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Mm -hmm. So I mean, okay, summarize. I think, what's the difference between these two consequences? Well, I, mean, I think that you see the the consequences of sin, the impact of sin, really touching male and female, um, really at the foundation of core of who they are. Mm -hmm. So women are impacted relationally, and meaning meaning pain, childbearing, relationship with the, the man, you know, male-female relationships, relationship with the husband. So, so women are impacted in terms of their, their ability to relate and bond and the relational And aspect. all emotions, don't you think? Could we talk about PMS? PMS, oh yeah, you know, and all of the things that go along with being a woman, mm -hmm. 
and, and at different seasons of life, at different not seasons just of when life. you're having children. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And guys are affected in terms of their capability or their ability mm -hmm. to, to be initiators or to affect the desired result. So everything that they try and do, their work, their labor is going to be frustrating mm -hmm. for them. They're calling to provide. They're, yeah, they're calling to provide. So, so, it, it, so in a sense, it affects a woman's relationality, it affects a man's capability, it affects them at the core. It have, sin affects us. It affects me at the core of who I yeah. am as a woman. And it affects a man at the core of who he is as a man. I think we see this all the time. I have a note in my Bible here. Um, you, your desire will be for your husband and he will r rule over you. My note says that the Hebrew language evokes a desire bordering on disease. It's kind of like a violent craving. Mm -hmm. And I look at the state of little girls, teen girls, single women, and this violent craving that I must have a man. I will not be complete. I mean, we've seen it when we wrote Lies Young Women mm -hmm. Believe, that they mm -hmm. felt like they didn't have value if they didn't have a boyfriend. And these, a lot of times, were girls that had never had a boyfriend. And single women struggle mm -hmm. sometimes to the, to the point where they lose their focus on their own value mm -hmm. because they're so seeking this out, this violent craving. A craving, and not only craving for, but craving to control. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once they get the man, they want it. Then there's this powerful desire to be in charge of the man. Yes. Yeah. And, and the way that the, the male responds to the female is also under the curse of sin. You know, the, you know, what was supposed to be so good and valuable and beneficial gets twisted into mm -hmm. a domination and a rule that is very harsh and very, very hurtful. I mean, I, I can't believe how much this passage talks about pain mm -hmm. and just so much pain. It's pain for the woman and it's pain for the guy. Um, and I think in different ways, but we see that all the time. And we need to remember that it's not men who cause the pain mm -hmm. or women who cause the pain to men. It's sin mm -hmm. that causes pain mm -hmm. and that it damages, as we saw in this lesson, mm -hmm. woman's inherent softness and man's inherent strength. So when we see this conflict, our tendency is to blame the other person for causing the pain. But we go back to Genesis and we see, no, it's, it's our sinful choices Mm -hmm. that end up causing pain. And I think as women, it's helpful for us to remember that we're not the only gender in pain. I mean, mm -hmm. men are suffering as well. They may not be articulating it as freely mm -hmm. or as often because they're not in getting together and talking about the opposite sex as much as we are, but they're suffering just mm -hmm. as much as a result of sin mm -hmm. as we are. So the battle is different than it's been cast to be. As I was reading this week's study, I was just overwhelmed with the sadness and hopelessness that if there is not an answer to this consequence of sin, mm -hmm. I'd be a feminist. Oh yeah. I'd be something yeah. because, because there wouldn't be a, there wouldn't be a, an A plan. They don't mm -hmm. see the A plan. So yeah. they, they try to create their own B plan, their own C plan and, and craft their own fig leaves. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, ultimately it's the same goal. What we want is to experience that mutuality and that harmony and the unity and the really the communion. Um, that's what God intended. And that's, that's the way God it intended. started out. You just don't want to have a battle. You want yeah. it mm -hmm. to be peaceable and you want yeah. it to be harmonious. And that's, and that's, really the wonder of what the, of the gospel is that there is a way Christ made a way to get back there, but it's not the way that we think, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, yes. it's not the way that we think it's not by clamoring for the way we think it should be, but it's by uh, submitting ourselves to God's plan that we actually begin to achieve and accomplish that. I mean, there's been so much when I just think of the pain in the yeah. lives of women, I, I think we need to, I, we need I to acknowledge that. We need to mm -hmm. acknowledge yeah. that because we cannot take that lightly. I, I, no. I do not take that lightly. I cannot tell you the number of girlfriends mm -hmm. who I have ministered to who have been so broken mm -hmm. yeah. at yeah. the point of their relationship with men mm -hmm. and have been abused um, and just mm -hmm. atrocities, yeah. atrocities. And the... Mm -hmm. The brokenness and the, the pain of sin is so ugly, is mm -hmm. just so ugly. Um, I've walked through situations with w girlfriends of mine who were being abused 
by their husbands. And uh, this one girlfriend, her husband was telling her, well, you need to submit to me. And and that includes mm-hmm. submitting to the way that I treat you. And he, he started physically abusing her and walking mm-hmm. that through with her, because that's not what the Bible teaches. No. No. We do not submit to sin. We mm-hmm. do not submit to unrighteousness. You know, your husband asks you to watch porn with him. That's your higher calling mm-hmm. is to respond to the right thing, which is responding to God. Right. You see, Eve responded to the wrong thing. We're responders right. and we need to have that responsive, soft spirit. We want to respond to the right thing, and we want to be that helper that challenges our men to a higher standard of godliness. And I know that in my marriage, there is no one um, in my husband's life that can gently and with as much um, impact challenge him to Mm -hmm. be the man he needs to be in a gentle and loving and godly way at the right time. uh, when I speak a word, he listens mm-hmm. uh, because beca- because of the power I think God has given us to be influencers in that mm-hmm. way. Yeah. yeah, and we see a great example of that in Scripture with Abigail. You know, when her husband's foolish and, and it's in First Samuel 25 and he doesn't want to respect David and the cultural customs of looking out after the sheep and he disses David and the servants go to Abigail, obviously knowing she's a wise woman, like you got to do something here because now the armies of David are going to descend on us. And she gets prepared and she goes out to meet him and she humbles her, herself. And scripture says she was beautiful, but that's not what David comments on later on. She humbles herself before him and then she calls him to a higher standard. She says first, I, and this is my paraphrase, but I know what God is going to do and I know how he's anointed to do. She she expresses that faith. And then she says, when you enter into your kingship, don't enter in with blood on your hands. And she calls Mm -hmm. him to be a godly man. She says, this is who you can be. Be that man. And Mm -hmm. she used every bit of her initiative and her planning and her creativity and her words and her personality Mm -hmm. and everything. And David saw it and relented. And that's, to me, a wonderful picture of what a real helper looks like. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. there's nothing faint-hearted about that. No. There's some bold initiative, but it's a belief in, I know what God's going to do, and I'm going to call you to believe in what God's going to do and yeah. live a right standard. And it's also not a woman just cowering mm-hmm. in fear, mm-hmm. in um, you know being overcome by evil, mm-hmm. but it's right. a woman overcoming evil with good. Well, and a woman who really, I, I, I do not think that this is a path that women who are not believers can walk. Um, because of the battle of the sexes, because of the conflict of sin, because there's so much brokenness, mm-hmm. um, I think that that we need to know Christ and we need to have the power of God's Holy Spirit in order for us to navigate this path of what it means to live out a godly life and how to make those decisions um, because we can't be simplistic about it. We, we really need to, to take the whole counsel of God into into mind when we deal with those types of and issues. And you've got to have the Spirit of God guiding you when you mm-hmm. take those stands, when you take those strong stands, when you <laughs> when you when you verbalize, look, I want to be this man. Mm-hmm. If God's Spirit is not in you empowering those words, mm-hmm. it, it can be done through the flesh. And it becomes mm-hmm. more it becomes the battle of the, battle of the it sexes. Escalates yes. the battle. Yeah, it escalates yeah. the battle. And that's usually because you're pointing to your own standard. Be this man, this man I expect you to be, rather than be this man that God wants you to be. Yeah. So, and, and that's very different, you know, jump through my hoops versus meet God. Or you deal with your sin before I'm going to deal with mine. Right, right. Yeah. Instead of examining our own hearts and our own sin right. and, and looking where God wants us to change. And that's why it grieves me every time I hear criticism that this position is uh, making allowances for women to be abused. That if you say, I want every bit of your intelligent submission as unto the Lord in order to show this redemptive picture of the gospel in marriage is allowing for abuse, no way. No, it doesn't, because the Lord doesn't either. He shed his blood because of this cycle of abuse and anger and anger you know, re- in response to being abused. And, and it is, th- there's no room for that. What we have to do is, is help each other by taking seriously the potential for this in marriage and asking good, loving questions. And where we have questions, you know, being the body of Christ to each other, so what's hidden is pulled into the light and has a chance to be redeemed. But in no way, in no way does it condone ab- abuse. I'll never mm-hmm. forget this girlfriend of mine who walked through anorexia, who walked through really a lot of self-doubt, a lot of self-image issues, um, uh, 
problems in terms of sexuality, yeah. you know, going through the revolving door with, with guys, uh, really coming to, to the point of, of helplessness, despair, of deep, deep depression and almost suicide. Mm -hmm. And she had all of this sin and all of this pain and all of this brokenness. Uh, and I asked and, and I prayed with her and kind of walked through the road with her. And at the end, uh, it wasn't the end of her journey because she's still on the path. But, but at one point I asked her, where was God? Like mm -hmm. what, how do you, how do you process all of this, mm -hmm. all of this pain and suffering? And she looked at me, I'll never forget it. She just beamed mm -hmm. and she said, you know, at the time, I thought that he abandoned me and I had gone through it because he didn't love me. But now when I look back, I see that he loved me enough to walk every step of the way through healing with me. Mm -hmm. And she said, I, it, was, it was literally like, um, you know, my experience was, was you know, like walking through mm -hmm. hell and I would never want to go back there. But... I wouldn't trade it for the world for what God has brought out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you said she was radiant. That fulfills yes. Psalm 34, verse 5. Those who look to the Lord are radiant. They have yes. no need to be ashamed. You know, even yeah. your worst circumstances, if you believe you're looking at them with gospel eyes, like God can change this. He's yeah. in the business of changing people. Mm -hmm. He's about recreating the whole or order. Mm -hmm. When you believe that, there's radiance even in the midst of your suffering. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that story. The, not, not those same details, but the 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 terrible darkness and pain and someone saying Jesus has brought me out mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. yeah and I wouldn't have traded it for anything because it proved to me how big he is and how yes. wonderful he is and how good he is mm -hmm. and that's where the grace of God is such an amazing thing mm -hmm. to transform pain to restore fallenness mm -hmm. to, um, mm -hmm. to take you know mm -hmm. what this enemy intended for evil and turn it to good yeah. so you don't glorify sin but in the midst of great, great, great sin. Mm. You just say where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Oh, That's why yes. we got to keep in our pain, whether we've been the one sinned against or the one sinning right. or both, because we all have both. Mm. We got to keep turning our hearts toward God and his grace and saying, with you is plenteous redemption. With you mm -hmm. is hope because of Jesus Christ. All of this is such a reminder of how many of us have been just fighting the wrong battle. You know, the battle of the sexes is absolutely fighting the war on the wrong front. And when we understand what's really at stake and that it's about the gospel and what's really on the line here, then we can turn the weapons that we have at our disposal mm -hmm. towards the right front and start doing some winning. So instead of fighting each other, we can start fighting for truth and, and find some victory. The fact is, we live in a fallen world and the battle of the sexes is an inescapable, painful reality. Now, turn to the women in your group and let's talk about some of the ways you've seen the battle of the sexes play out in your life. And as you talk, keep the good news in mind. Forgiveness and healing is always possible in any relationship because of the God we serve. Enjoy your conversation as you encourage each other in the Lord.